What does a good MC actually do for you? It's an intriguing question, and it's one that I'm often asked as a conference presenter, because most people tend to think that an MC doesn't do very much, and I disagree entirely. Google doesn't think an MC does very much, because if you Google, and I'd like you to go and do this, the definition of an MC, Google will tell you that an MC is noun, someone who introduces some other people on stage. And the example that Google gives is, the MC will now cut the cake. <laughs> I don't think that's what an MC does at all. And in fact, in an event of any nature with the budget and the cost and time that's going in to every single company event that I'm involved in, I quite like being an MC as well as a keynote speaker myself, because I think an MC and a good one will bind the event together. They're the glue that brings an entire story to life, not the star of the show by any means, but somebody who can actually lead the audience on a journey, taking them through start to finish and making making sure that they get the very best out of what the intended meaning was of the conference or event in its own right. A good MC will also interview weaker speakers who are not necessarily professional on stage. I'm fortunate that I've had a lot of radio and television experience as well as keynoting experience. So to bring people onto stage and bring out the very best of their story is something else that I believe a good MC should do. I can do all of those things for you, and I'm very interested in doing so. Why? Because I've sat through over 2,700 events in 46 countries in my lifetime. Believe me, I've seen the good, the bad, and the very bloody ugly style of conferencing. What I'm most concerned about is avoiding delegate fatigue. How do we avoid that bad side? You need great speakers, but you also need a brilliant MC. If you'd like to know more, email me at michael at the other michaeljackson.com and I'll share with you my thoughts on how to get the most out of your MC.